Hey guys, uh, I'm Darcy, uh, Darcy Clark. Um, just want to thank Steve and, and everybody here uh, for putting this on. I uh, just recently moved to New York and uh, Steve reached out and asked me if I wanted to come talk. Um, I'm the co-founder of a company called Themify uh, and we build great looking WordPress themes. Um, and I run it with uh, my partner Nick Law. Um, does anybody know Web Designer Wall? No? Yes? Yeah. Yeah? Speak up a little bit. Okay. Um, and Design Studio? Yes? Best Web Gallery? Okay, so he runs all those and he makes me look really good. Um, so, my topic is about, uh, or my, my presentation is basically about building, you know, advanced WordPress themes or starting to sort of uh, move your theme development uh, sort of to a scalable or more maintainable um, sort of place. Uh, I know that when we started, we had to sort of, uh, I, I wasn't much of a WordPress uh, developer. I actually come from like a very hardcore sort of just PHP development. So I had to learn a bunch of things. So a little bit about me. Uh, I also own another company called DealPage. It's like a daily deal aggregator. Um, I actually work for FI, Fancy Interactive. Uh, they're right around the corner. Um, and I'm also a jQuery team member. So if you guys like JavaScript, if you like jQuery, or you want to talk uh, sort of the nuts and bolts of that, uh, come talk to me. Uh, I do a lot of the front end development for the websites and all their assets. And uh, I'm also sort of a designer. Um, I blog about UX and development on my blog. And yeah, I think that's it. So I want to go over what we're going to cover. Uh, we're going to go over some first steps when you're getting started, when you want to start moving towards uh, just taking sort of your basic theme development. You want to go something more intermediate, advanced. You want to sort of get your skills to, to that next level. Then I'm going to talk about the two things that I find are the hardest to deal with, which is maintainability of code, files, and scalability. And then I'm going to give you guys some tips on going forward once you've sort of challenged or met those challenges. So going in here, uh, first steps, uh, you really want to find your goals. Um, for us at Themify, we really want to figure out, you know, what did we want to do with the, the project, with the, the framework? Um, was it make money? Well, kind of. Um, it actually was my livelihood for about a year, um, and now I'm here in New York. So, it might. Uh, we actually wanted to create some specific functionality. Um, there was something sort of missing. There was a niche that we were trying to meet um, in the WordPress development community. There was sort of this this area that we wanted to to hit on, um, and it was also partly personal interest. Uh, you know, I want to get better at development. I want to build something that was better than just all the crappy client themes that I had done. So we want to build something that was sustainable, something maintainable. So one of our goals was actually to mimic Dreamweaver, the old, really, actually, I think I have a picture of it. So if you guys have ever seen this, this screen, this is the old, like, sort of CSS wizard. And uh, we thought that this was what we wanted for end users. This is what was our goal. We want to build the Dreamweaver-esque version uh, of, of a framework, a theme framework. And we also want to have beautiful designs. So we want to make this, but we want to make it look good. And uh, I think we did it. So along these lines, we also need to choose our marketplace. We need to choose where we're actually going to sell our themes or if we were even going to sell them. So there's a couple options. Obviously, you guys may have heard of ThemeForest. I think they're also a sponsor. Um, Mojo Themes, uh, we've actually partnered with them in the past. Um, you know, there's places like GitHub where you can throw up your code for free. Um, or there's also the route that we took, which was Custom Marketplace. This is sort of where you have the most, uh, obviously, the most control. Um, you know, you're not sort of getting ripped off. Uh, and like, there's less sort of a percent being taken off uh, at the end. So we had to analyze our competitors. We had to figure out who was it that we wanted to sort of mimic or find out pros and cons of what they were doing. 
and uh, we want to find that niche. And we sort of found it in the idea that we were going to be better designed. We were going to have something that was not out there yet. We were going to be the first to have this sort of wizard um, uh, UI and, and functionality. So we looked and found actually four competitors that we really were uh, sort of up against. And these guys, Elegant Themes, Woo Themes, they were mostly the design guys. They were the ones that we sort of wanted to be better at them in that, in that respect. And then Headway and Up Themes were two guys that really had great frameworks. Um, we sort of wanted to beat these guys. We wanted to go above and beyond. And so now, now we have to go and develop. <laughs> and this is something that once you have figured out all this, you know, you've done your competitive analysis, you've figured out who, who it is you're up against, you've gone and figured out what your goals are, you figure out where, where you're going to sell your themes, now you have to go and develop. And that's sort of the basics. And how many people here have developed WordPress themes? Okay. How many people are beginners and have never developed a WordPress theme? Okay. Okay. So what I suggest is you go, you figure out, develop a bunch of themes, um, you start to get into a flow, and uh, and I think it's really important because you start to see where maybe you're having redundancies and, and things aren't very efficient. So, the two things that once you get over that little hurdle, you're, you're sort of building client websites or you're, or you're starting to build up a, a repertoire of, of themes, is you start to run into problems of maintainability. You've got code that you just keep adding to files that are just, you know, you know your functions.php file looks like, you know, a garbage garbage bin. And, uh, and that's, that's actually my biggest pet peeve with uh, WordPress is the functions.php file. Um, but yeah, and, and you also have problems with scalability. How are you going to make this uh, maybe a full-time job, a career? How are you going to be able to push out themes twice a month, three times a month? Um, are you going to have sort of those optimizations in place to actually, you know, take it to the next level and be able to churn out really efficiently uh, themes on a regular basis? So the first thing is namespacing. I just put this slide in because Wikipedia is going to be down tomorrow. Um, <laughs> if anybody's heard. Uh, so yeah, namespacing, this is just a random quote. I kind of liked it. Um, but namespacing is really important when you're first getting started with theme development. For all the people that haven't built themes before, um, it's really important that, that you sort of prefix or you, or you namespace all your variables, your functions, just so that you're not conflicting with somebody else's code. And this is something you're going to find when you sort of start to develop more and you actually get a user base that, you know, the biggest problem that comes up is, you know, conflicts with other people's plugins. And you start to resent and hate the rest of the community and yeah, that's where we went. <laughs> so name, namespacing uh, is important. So this is an example of sort of um, what we're working on, or uh, I'm sorry, what I'm working on right now. It's actually version 2.0. So um, you can see that I, this is some PHP for anybody that hasn't seen this before. Uh, I sort of set up a global array that I'm going to store all my variables in. Um, a lot of people usually just go the prefix route. They just always use a, a unique prefix, like you know, ours was themify or, or something else that's going to be completely unique to you. Um, it's important to have that, but especially the fact that we only have really one global namespace. Uh, that's that's sort of important to us, and something I learned is uh, is sort of key. So going into this, this is a function, and you can see I've also done the same thing. It says function themify CSS2 array. So I've just prefixed, uh, you know, our name, our unique name. I don't think there's anybody else in the world that has the name themify. But um, but we've run into problems before, you know, like Twitter. You know, there's just a million clients and a million plugins that you don't prefix, and they just have Twitter underscore users or something like that. So. We've run into problems, so it's really important to keep in mind that this is a best practice. Um, so this is kind of basic. So we're gonna, I'm going to move out of that. But I, this is one of the biggest things that you know I think is sort of challenging, and you have to keep in mind, um, and is usually the first uh, solution to any sort of problem that you get when a user comes to you. You know, my website is broken. There's probably a conflict. So. 
So the real bottlenecks for maintenance, I find, are sort of the integration points that we find with WordPress. Um, I've had a love-hate relationship with WordPress since I started. I'm a you know uh, native PHP developer. I've done a lot of uh, you know MVC framework development, API development, social network development. Um, so the theme files to me, uh, there's a lot of junk in in the files. But what we did is just add more junk to it. Um, you know, executing JavaScript is kind of um, again, you, you really run into some problems when you're working with, uh, you know, somebody's uh, user's website that has a thousand plugins. You, you know, you don't know what the quality is of someone else's, you know, third-party JavaScript. And then data abstraction. So we're talking about, you know, database. How do you inter, uh, you know, integrate with uh, WordPress? Uh, database or the options table. Um, this is a place where I think you know a lot of people could be optimizing right now, and it's sort of one of those integration points that I find there's a real bottleneck, um, and that's where you get a lot of problems. <laughs> so, first off, we have theme files. Um, the first thing that you know uh, would notice if you actually downloaded one of our themes. Does anybody have a theme of five theme? Okay. <laughs> Shame on all of you. <laughs> Do you have one? You guys make, uh, I just want to make sure I get the right one right. You guys make, like, uh, uh, is that theme in? Is that the one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, uh, I, I had a WordPress T-shirt at home that I was going to bring to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, you, you take down my number. I'll, I'll mail it to you. Um, so yeah, if you if you checked out our themes, and I hope you all do afterwards. Um, we we created sort of this XML file. Um, it came out of the fact that. Uh, my partner, Nick Law, uh, he's a designer and he hated PHP and he hated looking at PHP arrays and he was just scared that he was going to break something. So XML was a little bit easier, it was a little bit more like normal language. So we actually decided to put a lot of the options or the settings into this config file. So this is a little bit unique to our actual framework, to the, the actual way that we develop our themes. So. Uh, we then had on top of this, and this is where I start to add files to the theme folder and I'm starting to chunk it all up. I said, you know, we need to have a sort of a theme config file that sort of is the base of, you know, like, you know, the number one uh, config file is for uh, pretty much just the standard, the standard theme. Then there's a theme config file and that sort of does uh, stuff that's very specific to the theme. So it's like framework, theme, and then custom. So we really start to complicate things, but uh, I'm what I was trying to do and what I'm still trying to do is really uh, separate out the different layers there are to a theme and, uh, and to framework development. Um, and then, of course, we get to my favorite file ever, uh, functions.php. And we needed to do something about this because I really felt that if we just kept throwing things in here, I think that our users and people that would eventually want to develop on our platform wouldn't have the ability to sort of be uh, tidy about the way that they were integrating with other people's you know, uh, systems or on other people's installations. So we went one step further. We created a theme functions file, custom functions file, and a theme modules file, and a custom modules file. I think that's it. <laughs> so these are these are all get added to um, uh, that that big junk junky folder um, when you download one of our themes. So uh, I'm being a little honest here. I I think this is great actually. I think this really separates um, certain aspects of the development process, and it really separates um, the needs of uh, of what each one of these things does. So I'll, I'll go into it a little bit more. Um, this is what it would look like, uh, sort of when you would open up the the, uh, the folder for the first time. We've actually got a couple extra folders like skins. The Themeify framework sits in its own little folder called Themeify, and the rest of the stuff is pretty uh, should be pretty standard uh, to themes, uh, like the JavaScript uh, folder and images folder. Um, so going into the actual functions.php folder, or sorry, PHP file, this is what we originally had. And again, I, I was sort of like okay with this for a long time. 
And this really, to me, isn't a good practice. This is like not best practice. To ask a user to put this in uh, for whatever reason, uh, obviously they download the code and they install it themselves. But if we had to ask a user to go find you know, a certain line here, it, it just, it was too hard for us to do that. And we were really concerned that that functions.php file gets misused by a lot of different people. Code snippets come in and out, and, uh, and it's just not very manageable. So as of 2.0, that's what it's going to look like. Our integration point with functions.php file will be literally just that one line. And it'll be a lot easier for us to sort of you know, be OK with the footprint that we're putting on to a uh, person's uh, uh, WordPress thing. And it will actually hopefully spur on uh, developer interest uh, to integrate with our with our framework. So the other thing that uh, you know is a tough integration point is actually JavaScript queuing, conflicts, um, executing. A lot of people uh, you know sort of don't have a mixed bag of tricks. They only know you know WordPress or they only know design. They only know PHP. Um, but I really like the fact that you know I I've, I've tried to spread my spread my wings and get really good at JavaScript. And this is one of the key things is the, the conflicts that you're going to find um, have to be mitigated in some way. So what we found is that having our own sort of namespace again in JavaScript um, was key. So we actually create uh, a Themify global uh, namespace that we sort of put everything under. It's actually just a reference to a no conflict jQuery uh, like object. So everything, all our code goes into that little themify function dollar sign, goes right in there. That's all our JavaScript. And, uh, and I, we found that this is the best way to sort of mitigate some of those issues. Um, so executing JavaScript, this is a little bit more technical, and you guys don't need to get into this if you don't really understand it. Um, pub sub, so publish subscribe, it's a type of sort of messaging and event um, sort of passing, and I've used Peter Higgins' uh, code, this this little code snippet before, and we actually use it at Themify. We actually pass in that object, Themify, into this little little plugin. So what this allows us to do is create some really dynamic sort of uh, uh, execution of JavaScript, and it makes it our, our theme so much more modular in the way that we can actually uh, develop uh, interactivity. So this is a little uh, sort of example of how, how that works. So we can actually now say themify.subscribe, you know, themify in it. So we're going to subscribe to that to that event. And we're going to say we're going to pass in this function. And we're going to say, what's up, letter? And uh, it, that will alert when, the, when that uh, event is called. So to actually publish that event, all we have to do is say, uh, you know, dollar sign inside the themify uh, uh, closure. Uh, dollar sign dot publish themify in it, and you can pass in an array of arguments, and you pass up g. So it's like sub g, and that's you know. Sorry, that's my lame humor. Uh, but yeah, this is this creates a really dynamic uh, case for us to, to create some really cool stuff. And I did this in the hopes that one day that I, I would have a huge developer base building on top of this platform, and they could tie in to certain events that we had set up for them, so that they wouldn't have to worry about um, you know, sort of creating their own, or they could really tie into the system that we had set up. So these are actually all the integration points for anybody that is developing on our, on our framework. There's like a whole bunch of them, and I'm probably going to add a whole bunch more. Um, but some of them are like, you know, before and after login or show login and things like that. And and this just gives the actual, you know, your your potential developer user base uh, something to sort of, you know, some meat. You know, you have no clue what they could do with this, but uh, I think it's sort of like that kind of API abstraction is really important to help sort of. Um, spur on the developer base, and I think those those people are key for uh, success. So, the other thing, or the last thing uh, in these integration points, is the actual data abstraction. <coughs> and this is actually a, a, I pulled out some code. I'm burying my 
myself to you guys, and, uh, and hopefully nobody sees any like spelling mistakes or anything. But um, uh, and or you know bad bad programming practice. The this is actually the the, the code we use to initialize the database um, that we are the database table that we use, and. In the options, uh, WordPress options table, uh, which is where most people actually, you know, store store their uh, data, we go and create a, a, a unique uh, row with the name of the theme, and uh, and eventually we have this function that will actually set and store um, the the data in there, actually in a, in a nice big serialized uh, base64 block, and. Um, we do this because we didn't really want to create a whole database table itself. You see a lot of WordPress themes, they add a whole bunch of uh, you know, tables into the, into the database, and that's very hard to manage, it's very hard to, um, uh, very hard to back up, and, and as far as going forward and, and versioning, it's, uh, you know, we're, we know that the options table is always going to be there and WordPress is always going to have that available. So. We do this really cool thing. We have this big array that's stored in one little place, and we can back it up really easily, and people can, you know, uh, import really easily. So, so that's how that works. And this is how we get the data. We do a thing, a little function called themify get data. Um, we unserialize that big blob. And then we have this nice array that has all our information that we stored in, all our settings, and, and that's sort of how we can get data and manipulate it. And for any kind of developer that's actually developing on this platform, it's really important to have that ability to grab stuff that they've stored. So this is the actual framework. This is how it looks. Um, and I just wanted to run through quickly an example of, of uh, you know, the, the way that these sort of modular processes work. Um, so a person clicks the save all button, one of the two, and they put in a bunch of data and themify before save event is published, uh, are published. And that's the JavaScript event. So that means that I can you know, add as many sort of triggers on top of that that I want to execute. So this is really cool because you know, I could have five of my buddies working on the same project and they can create some piece of code that just at tax on to something that I've done there. And after, you know, uh, let's say I've created uh, some function that basically says, okay, I want to see what happens, you know, themify before save uh, is published. I want to send an Ajax request off with the information that was in this, in this big form, this WYSIWYG, uh, or not WYSIWYG, but sorry, this, this Dreamweaver-esque uh, version of, uh, of sort of a CSS editor. And then after that's done, the PHP will execute that themify set data, which is again modular, we can execute it at any time. And then the Ajax callback publishes another JavaScript event, themify after save event. So this is sort of like where you can become modular, where you can see the benefits of developing this way and really sort of abstracting um, different, uh, different parts of your, of, uh, of your code. So quickly, I'm going to try to go through some optimizations, utility functions, some caching, and finally templating. And once I've done these, you guys can get out of here. <laughs> um, but I think these are really important, uh, especially the utility functions. Does anybody know what a utility function is? No? No? It's just something that reduces redundancy. You see yourself doing something all the time. And you know that function is going to do that. You only have to run it, you know, once or twice, or you know, it just takes away a lot of your code. Um, you know, if you're, let's say, having to rewrite code for links, you create a link utility, and you know, you can generate links on the fly, and, uh, and it just like saves you a lot of time and development, and makes you that more efficient. So. With Themify, I'm, I'm going to have to go through these pretty fast. we got a bunch. Uh, but I think they're all important, especially things like you know XML to Array. You find that actually in a lot of different uh, frameworks. They have things like that. Um, get Image. You, know, you can get an image and set an image. 
you can render templates, you can get a file, so you can get the contents of the file. And these are all utility functions that we have internally as tools for us, but then also for the people that might develop on our framework. Um, we have get user role, so that's just what the role is of the current user, things like that. Um, and there's a whole bunch of more. But these are the kind of things that I think will make you guys that much more efficient and, uh, and proficient at, at developing themes. So let's look at one of them. This is themeified get. This is a get uh, function. And all I'm doing is I'm trying to get a piece of information from the database. I'm trying to see whether or not there is uh, actual meta, post meta um, uh, a value set, or in our options table, if we've set something with the same uh, field name. So uh, it looks cool, but it's also very wrong. I'll tell you guys why in a second. Um, does anybody, can anybody see why it's very wrong? It's going to be really hard to find. No? No? Okay. Uh, the theme of I get data. The function that I was talking about a little while ago, that database interaction that we, we were talking about, there's a, there's a big problem with, the, with that, that function, actually. Uh, the problem is that every time I execute theme if I get that, it makes a database uh, query. And so if I was, let's say, putting that theme if I get into a loop, and we had 40 posts and over the loop, you're talking about 40 database queries on top of that one that got that loop. So this is an optimization issue, and this is something you know I've caught. I think that's really important to sort of be mindful of. Um, we were actually sort of, I was almost, it was almost pointed out to me by a, a peer that uh, Themeify, our themes were actually you know, making several uh, database queries, unnecessary database queries, and I actually found you know, where it was, I pinpointed that. So, you know, for instance, this is the Themeify get function you see in action, we're getting the color. But it's actually doing a, a, a database query to try to find out if there's uh, you know, that color value in that options table. So it's pretty inefficient this way. So what are we going to do? We're going to go back to our namespace, that code at the beginning where we store all this you know, fun stuff that's reusable and uh, you know, you've got a whole bunch of global sort of variables here. And we're going to add two things. And what I added was themeify globals cached, and I set it to false by default, and then themeify globals uh, data, which I'm just going to hold as an array right now. And these two things are going to help make sure that I mitigate that issue and that we don't have sort of uh, a really optimization problem uh, when we're uh, trying to uh, query the database. So now we've done, done that, we're going to go back into the theme get getData uh, function. And I'm going to add a couple of things here. I'm going to say I want to add that yeah, if. So if theme five globals is, uh, cached is, uh, is, is false, that means that you know if there is no data being stored, we're going to run this code, and it's going to go query the database once. But once it's once it's queried the database, once it's got that information, we're going to change the cache to true. We're going to store that information, and then the next time that we come around to that uh, to this function, it's actually going to grab the data from that global variable instead of making a database query. And that's how, how easy it was to, to optimize. Um, I went one step further, though, because I realized there would be a problem every time I went to go set new information and potentially set information while in a loop. I went back to my Themify set data, and all I did was add the same two global variables. I said, every time that you run this, we're going to say, it's the cached is true, and we're just going to store the data that you're passing in there. So you automatically uh, are storing the most relevant data, the most, uh, the newest data, and and you're not having to worry about querying the database all the time and, and create, uh, you know, sort of a big optimization um, in that in that respect. So uh, I'm on my last thing, our optimization uh, with templates. Uh, the biggest thing for us is that. If you've seen any of our templates, which I guess you haven't, or <laughs> any of our themes, uh, which I pray that you guys all go check them out, um, 
we're very responsive. We build responsive designs. We have you know mobile down. We have the iPad down. Uh, as you can see, you know we, it looks great on every sort of device. And this is actually really good for us because we create sort of responsive layouts that kind of fit in anywhere. And it actually makes our lives easier because we can reuse a lot of those uh, reuse a lot of those um, sort of layouts and. So we have a responsive, a really fluid design. We use uh, our, our own like grid, which is actually somebody made a website off of it, and you know, basically stealing our idea. Um, and we use utility classes, so things like you know, dot hide or things like that. It's just again, things that make our lives easier, and it's a little bit, um, a little bit easier for us to develop faster and, and scalable. And then we have short codes, which are also available to all our users, but we also use them internally. Uh, things like, you know, button style, big red. Um, columns, we have column classes as well, utility classes. Um, is logged in, uh, is guest. And these things are, all, are great. They help us template easily. They help our, our, our clients, our, our user base, uh, template, and, and really create customized uh, themes. And because of all that fluid, all that, that work we put into the actual um, development of the front end of the layouts, we actually came up with a really simple way of, uh, of customizing sorry, your theme by just clicking a few layouts that are cl clicking a few different um, sort of options that would change the layout. And, and with very little uh, PHP, very little HTML, we were able to create something that was really flexible and we reuse it on almost every theme. Um, sometimes you can sort of see the similarities between some of our themes, you can sort of see where uh, the lies, lines get blurred. But a lot of the times, you know, it's too hard to figure out, you know, which combination of these someone's used. Uh, and it's great, it's very similar to, um, I think somebody was talking about the, the what is it? Ka, starts with a C. Ka, Carrington, yeah, Carrington. If you guys have heard of Carrington, it's very, very similar to that. They have a very flexible, uh, fluid sort of uh, layout. So, final tips. This is the end. Uh, and you guys can, you know, uh, ask me any questions afterwards. I'm always open uh, to giving any help. So stay consistent, uh, especially for developers. You know, if you're going to use double quotes everywhere, stick with double quotes. Don't make your code look like five people have worked with it. Um, especially when somebody new comes in, you know, you'll have your standards. Um, reduce that redundancy by using the utility functions I was talking about, and uh, and really help optimize uh, your code and efficiency. Include fallbacks. Uh, and this is really important. A lot of times people think, oh yeah, PHP 4 was like, it was on its way out. But like, I was in the middle of developing a company that was based on PHP 4. So, you know, I had to have fallbacks for, for people that, you know, weren't upgrading their, their server and technology. And, and only if it's relevant, really. You don't have to be supporting IE6 anymore. Uh, no, nah, nah, Microsoft says they don't support it. So they, they cut cake the other week, okay, saying goodbye to i6. So uh, write and maintain documentation. You never know when your you know team's going to grow. Uh, even for yourself, you might come back to code that you haven't seen in like three months. It's just good to have good documentation, good commenting uh, standards and best practices. Coordinate regular code reviews. This is really important. Share with your friends. Uh, GitHub's great for sharing little snippets um, with other people, but definitely be consistent again with those code reviews, and definitely make sure that you're you're keeping up with that. And just you know doing either pair programming programming or something like that to make sure you're always on on your top game. And then reward active users. If you're starting this as a company, it's really important to for the people that are, are enjoying what you're doing and then people that are actively involved in your community. You know, reward them by saying, I got a new feature, I'd like you to be, you know, this is sort of something special. Be a beta tester or, or you know, test this new theme, and, and it's really good. It actually helped us a lot, and I think a lot of people enjoy knowing that they were on something uh, sort of, ex or they were in on something uh, exclusive. So, uh, finally, launch. 
it's one of the hardest things for developers, designers, anybody to do. Um, I know I wrote a post recently, if you guys go to my website, about the fact that I'm scared half the time about uh, launching anything and that uh, criticism can be really hard. But it's just important to launch something and get it out there. And, uh, and thank you. Questions? How do we get your framework? Is it on GitHub, or is the only way to get it is to purchase a theme? Or? So, for a long time, we've been working on, or I've been working on the actual open source development of it. So, we're, we're going to try to get out to everybody for free. Um, and I'll be actually sending Steve some codes for everybody to have a free theme on Themeify. So, you guys will all get one now that you don't, you know, you don't know what it is, but. Uh. <laughs> is it on WordPress.org? Uh, we do have themes on WordPress.org. We have, uh, I think we have four themes now on WordPress.org, but um, unfortunately because of certain certain things we weren't doing as good as we could have, uh, we had to take certain functionality out of it, so it's probably better to, to if you really want the full suite with that whole sort of wiz uh, wizard, um, that really cool uh, you know end user experience, to, to purchase through us or, or the free free. Uh, Coupon code for the for the theme you can go try to. So. Yep. Not not hard at all. We actually have a tutorial on how to do that uh, on our on our website. I can I can provide that to you uh, before you go. Uh, it's really easy. It's a I think it's pretty easy to make child theme off, off anybody's uh, website. Um, a lot of the sort of functionality that you saw are a lot of those files, those theme files. Um, they were brought about because we uh, thought that. A lot of people didn't want to create just like create a brand new child theme. They just wanted to add some certain, you know, features um, within that that folder. So, go ahead. I, I, you guys, I noticed that a lot of yours are like portfolio. Themes. Yeah. Is that? I mean, is that? Uh, is that our niche? Is that our? You're going or something? Um, that's not really uh, our genre. Like, uh, I know Nick, my the, my co-founder. He. Uh, he enjoys sort of that that expressive. He's a designer. Uh, he likes he likes showing off sort of his illustrations. Um, we've done a lot of different stuff, business themes. Um, it it's sort of it's easy to go to what's what's easy to go you know design and develop for yourself. But um, I don't think it's a, our niche, so to say. Like I know a lot of companies have started up just being band website, band theme providers or, or restaurant theme providers. I think we're open to developing for like any. Any genre. So. Uh, I wonder if you had any recommendations around like automated kind of unit testing of like your theme framework functions or like functional testing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, for JavaScript, definitely Q unit. Uh, I know the guys that develop it. It's also a jQuery project. Um, so I'm a little biased. I have to sort of say that, um, <laughs> uh, but but yeah, QUnit for my JavaScript um, is really good to have uh, unit tests. I don't do much unit testing for PHP, uh, unfortunately. You know that's something I should get into more. I think that's a really good, really good point that you know it's good to constantly test, uh, uh, you know, against a good test suite, uh, test your code against a good test suite. Um, but I don't have any recommendations. I'm sure, I could find some quick, but uh, I don't have any off by hand. Um, how, do, how do the XML files work? Like, are those like a manifest of all of the files in there? Is that what you keep in there? Or what do you so what's in the XML file? Yes, yeah. So the XML file, it... Okay, pass. Uh, the XML file holds a bunch of settings. Um, and it's similar to, you know, again, we call it the config XML. Um, it's similar to anything that you find. I think a lot of other uh, WordPress providers have uh, PHP files that have similar sort of just uh, variables that are in there. It's just a little bit easier, I, I find, for somebody to look at that and feel like they can sort of mess around with it. And we also get the chance to actually parse it. So the thing is that we can catch errors um, instead of somebody messing with PHP and then their website goes down and then they're like, you know, they don't have no clue. So that was a, it was twofold reason that really we could catch errors before uh, they were actually, you know, an issue uh, and sort of mitigate that, you know, to, and, and really turn the, the themes to end users. Go Not really theme related, but can you, you talked about in the beginning a little bit. Um, 
you talk about the, your, the infrastructure that you use to sell themes on and mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously it has to be some type of secure download and payments and stuff like that. Yeah, so we've switched a number of times. We've had uh, issues uh, with different, um, even different uh, hosts, like uh, that, that's been sort of an issue, you know, SSL certificates are very, it's very important to us that, you know, obviously everything's kept safe and secure. Um, the infrastructure that we had originally was uh, uh, the exact same uh, infrastructure that WooThemes is on. Uh, we actually went with the same uh, technology. Um, I think it's A-member. Um, and, uh, and we were using that for a while. Uh, we've moved sort of to the newer version of that, um, which I think they're also still on, or they're on a sort of a customized version. So, it, you know, we're still on uh, that infrastructure, and I don't see us doing something like super, super custom. But, um, you know, our goal eventually was to, I'm not sure if we still want to keep going that way, but we want to eventually have our own marketplace where people that were developing on our themes could, you know, develop plugins or develop uh, code that they could sell you know, through our marketplace, similar to uh, ThemeForce, but we would have sort of a platform for those people to sell. So. How does that system work with uh, updates? Does it all come, like, if, you know, if, you're, if you have a theme already, getting it notified yeah. within WordPress, or you may have to get an email? Or so, so you're saying if we push an update? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we have an uh, automatic uh, theme updater, so like sort of like a little prompt will come up, and you say, click. Just like how you get a WordPress or a theme. Exactly. Yeah, we have uh, we mimic sort of their their style of uh, downloading a file, unzipping it, unpacking it, um, and I think that's that's the best way. We we had it originally, and then we had to scrap the theme updater, that automatic theme updater, for a bit, um, just because of some technical issues. It's back in now, so um, if we push a theme or push an update, um, it's seamless to you. You don't have to keep coming back to our website, even though it's beautiful. So, go. Are you doing it through WordPress.org, or is that... Oh, okay. Um, no, we do our, our, our updates through uh, just like our own internal, you know, the, the team will look uh, at our own internal service. Um, we do push updates through WordPress. If you if you bought a, a theme through WordPress.org.com, uh, uh, um, uh, then, you know, with that, you'll get that update. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how it works on that end. Uh, uh, you know, I was kind of hands off with the, they, they wanted me to pull out a bunch of my code, so I would kind of went, you know, somebody else fi fixed it up then. Um, so I'm not sure how it works exactly that way, but, it, you know, it's a really simple process if you just uh, come through us. Uh, so, anybody else? Yeah. Um, when you're developing a team with uh, the profiler, do you find that you're stepping out to the tutorial or are you using like a versioning system? Or what no. So, so the great thing is uh, me and Nick are very like uh, uh, like yin and yang. He's, he's the ultimate designer. I've never met a guy that's more creative. He has great illustration skills. And I, I love to develop. Um, we step on each other's toes when he's trying to develop HTML in Dreamweaver still. So, so, so the idea of the, the, the Dreamweaver CSS wizard, that was his idea, sort of. He, he sort of said, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we had this? And I said, you're still using that? And uh, I, I, of course, use uh, some line text editor and, and like proper programming things. So um, that's the only time that I feel that we sort of ruffle each other's feathers is when we're doing like HTML, CSS stuff and JavaScript stuff. And he just doesn't want to give up sort of his star name as, as web designer wall. He guy, but he's he's great about it. Yeah, and I, I think we get it along together. So yeah, that's good. And and yeah, uh, to that to that note, uh, you know, he's being good about me giving him criticism on <laughs> on design, and he gives me lots of criticism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anybody else? Sure. Uh, when you design a theme, at what point do you realize that? Oh, this is turning into a plugin. Like, how do you find that balance between developing a theme? Sorry, so how. Uh, so I started developing a theme and then it turned into a plugin? Yeah, it obviously isn't a lot of modules and it's very functional. Yeah, yeah. So at what point do you make that separation? Or do you separate it all? So, so we looked at the framework and we looked at sort of 
like you said, separately. And we wanted really tiny integration points, and we wanted it to be very modular. That's why when you see all the utility files, there's our, our functions, there's so many of them, and it's sort of very abstracted. Um, so you can use what you want and not what you don't. Um, and it's not completely, they don't completely rely on each other. Um, so, you know, when we're developing a theme, we're just developing a theme. Functionality, uh, really uh, is nice because we have these things called modules which are similar to like our own custom plugins so for every theme we can start up um, uh, or we can create custom modules uh, that will be the functionality and they tie right into the to the back end um, which is really cool um, I can show you guys a demo but I don't know how much time you have or if you guys want to see that later um, it's up to uh, but yeah, it's a, we don't. I don't ever see us going in a route where we're building like a calendar theme, uh, and then we're like, this is obviously a plugin. I would think that we would be like, oh, we should do this as plugin automatically. Uh, uh, we were working on a plugin. I actually, even put my foot in my own mouth and, and wrote a quote for Web Designer Mag saying that we were developing a, a plugin. And it was a commerce plugin. Um, we got about. 50 to 60 percent of the way down, and we were fighting with Ruthians at the time to try to see who would launch ours first. They they took another year to do, <laughs> finally launch theirs, and we just gave up. So uh, we don't have any uh, plugins right now. Um, I do have some small scripts that you know basically run as plugins, like a live editor, so you can like just double click on like a post, uh, type it, and it'll save the, the post when you're on the front. Um, there's a couple other ones similar to that, I think, on the plugins of ours. Yeah. But yeah, we don't officially have any plugins. No. Hey, boss. Do you recommend any particular plugins for e-commerce? For e-commerce? No. <laughs> I'll be I'll be honest. I actually cracked a few WordPress. Uh, I won't tell you which ones, but I, I went ahead and uh, not cracked. Uh, you know, simple, simple, uh, simple little uh, uh, techniques to sort of circumvent processes. And you know, I'm getting like 20 themes for five cents, and you know, like uh, things like that. So I, I don't find that there are very there are very many that are secure. Um, uh, I mean, do we have to do you know one? Yeah. So yeah. if you actually go on our website, WPNYC.org, um, in the videos, we did a presentation last year, and there's three e-commerce plugins that are, are that are actually reviewed in, on the video. So you'll be able to see three. Um, one is WP Commerce. Yeah. One of them is Shop, S-H-O-P-P, -P, and I actually think got the third one. It's actually a hosted solution, uh, but you get you, it'll give you some good ideas. So the cart 60, is it cart, uh, well, cart 66 is good, and WooCommerce yeah. just put out one. And uh, So you have options. Uh, I just don't trust the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, so. Well, just real quick, your other, you two have a couple other brand names. Yep. What are some of the other frameworks that impress you guys? That impress us? Yeah. In the WordPress community, are you right. telling me to tip my hat to my competitor. <laughs> <laughs> this, I mean, from because you, I mean, when you did it in the first place, you showed the the uh, those two that, that you said. One of the Shop and um, what was the other one? We want to wanna, beat them. You want to beat them, and is there so basically the rephrase is it? Who are you still trying to beat? I don't think we're trying to beat it. I think we we've been very successful. Uh, we've you know been featured in uh, .NET magazine, Smashing Mag. Uh, Web Desire May, we've had our work featured. Nick's always had his work featured, and he's really reputable. So, um, so I think we're we're very successful. We both lived off. The only reason why I'm in New York is because it's New York, and I was offered a job, and then they said they would pay for me to live at Wall Street and Broadway. So, <laughs> can't pass that up. But um, yeah, I think uh, you know, I think we're we're successful. I still, I'll be honest, um, I really like uh, Headway. Headway themes, if you guys have heard them, the framework I think is good. I think it's also a young guy and his dad that run the company, um, which I, I think is great. And I think that, that what they do is, is awesome. Um, and up themes, I, I really, that they inspired me. Um, and I think Chris Coyer developed the, 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 the or, or somebody I know developed the actual like little logo, the little astronaut looking guy. It, and uh, 
Yeah, they're, they're framework inspired, inspired sort of art development. So, so those guys, I, I still give, uh, you know, full credit to. And obviously, um, as far as JavaScript goes with jQuery team, I, I think Dojo's a great thing, Backbone, if you guys are into JavaScript, that kind of stuff, I, I think the, the teams behind that are, are great. Go. Talk a little bit about, say you're developing open source, you also yep. what, um, so, so the, the internal struggle of, of the fact that I want to give my code for free and Nick wants to make money um, <laughs> yes that, that, that was a struggle from day one um, I, I love the development community the design community I think that everybody should have the opportunity to work with our themes and, and uh, so it, it's been hard as far as getting out there. I even want, I reached out to guys like Addy uh, from Moothings and, and other people. Um, I told Steve, uh, I reached out to like Jeffrey Way who was here and spoke here. Um, I reached out to pretty much the whole community, the top tier of the community to try to say, I think that we should standardize sort of the platform and I think we could all take what's great about our, our frameworks, create something that is sort of a standard that like really good and get behind it. Similar to a, a jQuery is for you know the natural polyfill of JavaScript. I think that we could create a framework that was great. Um, and you know, it, it's very hard to get them on board because that's their bread and butter. You know, you got this functionality and it, you know, guys like page lines really tore into us when they first came on the scene. They, they, you know, they actually were tweeting on our, our hashtag. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, guys like that, you, they've got a beautiful framework. They got the drag and drop. Have you guys have seen, have you seen page lines? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, I don't like it. You don't like it? <laughs> I, I think it's great. I think it's similar to Carrington. I, I was really inspired when I saw it. It's drag and drop. It's fluid. I would love to see that kind of functionality mixed with our awesome styling uh, ability, mixed with, you know, Wuthim's uh, credibility, and uh, I think we could all come together on something. But, um, you know, uh, that's just a dream, and, uh, and hopefully we'll eventually have this open source so nobody, you know, so people can develop with us and not against us. Are your themes, your themes are not open source? We have uh, free, uh, so we are under GPL. So, uh, I mean, that's the dirty, the dirty thing about theme development. You're paying for support. Uh, you're not paying really for the theme, or you're paying for access to the theme. Um, it's been how we make our livelihood, but uh, I always think of it sort of as, as soon as you get the theme, you can do what you want with it. Um, you know, be respectful, but uh, yeah, they, we have a lot of free themes that you can, uh, we, I think we have four now, so you know you can actually go get a free theme as well, not just with the discount. But the paid themes are GPL as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're paying again for, them, for right. support. So so we circumvent the GPL, <laughs> well, so to speak. So, yeah. Any other questions? One more. On, the, on your support, is tutorials or form? That you can Question was, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm off of it now. I, I again, no, Nick. Now I'm not <laughs> Sorry. Now I'm not oh uh, no, 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 no. no you can reach out to me personally. Uh, like uh, I'm always uh, accessible via Twitter, via GitHub, uh, any issues like that. But um, we have a support person now, and, and Nick still does a lot of that. Uh, I'm sort of out of that, and again, I've still developed sort of the the, the frameworks side of it. So um, yeah, that's. I won't be on there looking, <laughs> looking, but if you have a personal question, you can send it to me. Yep. Uh, th this can be a dumb question. I'm just curious, is that, does the framework at all affect page load um, and render? And that sort of thing? Uh, not if you're like counting microseconds. I don't know. Like a PHP, it's so fast. You have to do a lot of things wrong for it not to be really fast. And our, you know, we're not doing anything that's overly intensive. Um, again, we, we those optimization, like that one optimization I showed you, are, those are the kind of things that I'm hoping that you guys will think of actively when you're developing, because that's what we're doing. We're we're trying to find places where we have in inefficiencies and we want to be more efficient and we want to be more modular, and um, that just means it's a lighter weight solution, lighter weight framework. So I, I don't think we, I mean, I would say that we're probably faster I, I, now, but uh, we haven't done tests or anything. I mean, you're, again, you're counting microseconds <laughs> or whatever. Anybody else? You guys want to party? 
Uh, do you find that is your theme using a lot of, uh, like, you know, I know some people like the direct calls to that. Is, uh, do you find that you're doing a lot, are using a lot of the WordPress building functions, or are you kind of doing a lot of direct calls? Or? So this was, the, this was the gripe that WordPress dot or WordPress.org, all the dudes. Matt had a problem with me. <laughs> well, not a problem with me, but um, uh, I'm a, again, I'm from PHP background. I don't like a lot of the stuff that WordPress does, and I like to know what's in my code. Um, so a lot of the stuff I was doing was circumventing sort of their, their practices, so they, uh, you know, yeah, we, we do. We, I've, I've started to embrace that, you know, uh, you know the WordPress on Q script and, and and things like that, where you know it's it is helpful to integrate at that point. But I, I do try to uh, mitigate as much as I can and, and use my strong PHP background to to, to bring sort of a modular uh, modular sort of uh, design, uh, which I think a lot of other frameworks don't have because the people that are building them. Uh, learn PHP from WordPress. They came in through it that door, and I, I came in sort of the other way. Do you find that it performs better, or is it? Uh... Again, uh, I mean, I haven't done any performance tests. I, I personally think yeah, it, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's, the, it's the best, and you're all going to find out why. Um, so yeah, it, it, I think that it performs better. Um, I think that there's just some really cool stuff that you can do with it, and I think that I've tried to give. Uh, people that are developing on it or that want to sort of like play around enough sort of tools and little things that they can sort of be like, ooh, like, you know, I, I can integrate here and do, do this thing. So I think it's better in that way that, you know, it, um, you know hopefully I'm going to have a better documentation up one day um, for everybody to see and, and they'll understand and be able to play with, uh, with our, the framework more. So, anything else? Anybody else? Okay, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, um, from the developer community, what do you guys think of uh, Darcy's presentation? Just curious. Developers? Excellent. 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 Awesome. From the, beginner from the beginner community, how many of you were completely lost and have no clue what Darcy said? I'm sorry. Except that he's awesome and his themes are awesome. But <laughs> seriously, raise your hand if you really are a little, little lost. Okay. It's okay. Put him up I can, there. I can do another one specifically for like 101. I can do that. Awesome. I can do that. Definitely. I want you back then. Okay. okay but I do want to just say, give, uh, say just 30 seconds to help you through this because I realized something in the middle of the presentation about frameworks and about uh, beginner uh, WordPress development. Um, I want you to go, you know, go back home and, and Google child themes. Okay, you want to look at child, um, working with child themes. And the benefit of that is that you get to go on Themeify and find a theme that you really like, but you know, maybe it's 80% what you want and you just want to tweak it a little bit. And you get to buy it from Darcy, you get all this amazing code that he wrote, and then you just need to write a child theme, which may be just some tweaks in design. Or may, maybe you want to add a function, depending on what you want. Maybe you, want, maybe you just want to change a color or something. But by using a child theme, and this is really what makes, one of the things that makes WordPress great, you get the benefit of Darcy's code. When Darcy updates his code, he pushes it out. You get the benefit of that as well, and your child theme doesn't get updated or... Um, Overridden. It's incredibly important to do it. So, for those beginners out there, if you, or even developers, child themes are very important, and you get to use Darcy's framework to do that. And apparently, you're going to show us something. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't need child themes. You yeah. don't need child themes. All right. Nah. Okay. So the, <coughs> my website runs off of uh, it's a custom themeify theme. Um, I'm running out of date stuff. Don't hack me, please. Uh, <laughs> oh, your WordPress is out of date. And yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, but yeah, so you can basically go in here. You can change a whole bunch of stuff really quickly. Um, so like the background color, you can upload like a, a background image. This is actually an older version of the, the software. Um, if I was able to connect, yeah, you know, I'm not going to. 
Sorry, I'm not going to go through your images, man. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's a whole bunch of options. Again, it's really straightforward. Sort of like the body font. Again, you can sort of just like pick um, really quickly, customize things. Uh, the, the little tweaks, right? Um, and we have skins. Uh, I don't have any skins for this one, but you can quickly sort of grab the skin. And the way that the styling works is it's sort of there's the base, then you can apply a skin on top of that, and then there's the custom stuff, which you can do in the styling tab. And you know you can change your site logo, um, change the position of it. Uh, again, this is an older version of of the actual framework. Um, you know you can export the actual settings and import them to another uh, website. Um, and then there's some basic uh, you know sort of uh, settings here, or theme settings as well. Um, but yeah, the, the small tweaks you can do if you want to do something larger, child themes. Yeah, but definitely something you want to look into. Go. I use Genesis. Yep. Is it something? I'm not so okay. familiar with it. Um, um, they weren't one of our competitors. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't one of the people that you were trying to beat. Yeah. <laughs> there were some people that, yeah, we were just like, I think we can move on to the other guys that we really want. Uh, or we thought we had more something in common with what they were doing. Oh, okay. So I think Genesis is more like a more like hybrid. I don't know. Like I haven't looked into it. Enough. What do you? What, what's the yeah, question? Question? Yeah. I'm just. It's a friend. I was just wondering how it compares to that. Yeah, I haven't looked at it much. Okay. So. Genesis is more of a framework that really does rely on child themes. Oh, okay. um, but but right. I mean, it's the same. It would be the same concept. Darcy uh, theme fight has a lot of options, but. Um, and there is a theme, there is a Genesis theme that actually um, has a lot of options as well. But yeah, the concept yeah. of child themes is still the same. And the great thing, I guess, with the, the config file also is you can change all these. So you can create your own selectors and you can style anything you want. Um, so if you start to understand the framework, um, you can create with the framework uh, a custom sort of uh, control panel or styling panel for your clients. So you only want them to sort of but you only want them to change the header, you can do that. You can just get rid of, in that XML file, you can get rid of the settings that w would let them sort of change the body font or the color and that kind of stuff with, you know, quick delete, upload it to, the, to their client server, and then now all they can do is, you know, that end user can only um, upload an image for their, their header. Or, or then you can create your own custom uh, modules. So each one of these is actually a module. Like the font family is a module, the color is a module. So mm -hmm. you can create your own sort of, uh, you know, input um, or anything. You can create a radio button, and then that option gets stored in that in that big database array, and then you can pull it out somewhere else and do stuff with it. So we, the the great thing is again going back to what I was saying with the the our first round of users that were really getting into development, they they love that. They want more and more of that and that kind of integration where they got to sort of make their own. Uh, options, options table without having to like, you know, create, recreate this like style. It like integrates right into it. Where did you create those uh, options? Uh, non-mom. What file? So in uh, so again, when I was talking about the modules okay. files, um, that's where you, you you would put them, um, and you could also put them in the functions.php file because you can put anything in there. Um, but I don't suggest that. I really think that people should, you know, pull things pull things apart or, or separate that. It's becoming sort of a garbage bin of, of things. So that's my one one thing. So, um, but yeah, uh, check it out. Um, if you guys have any other questions, uh, I'd love to answer them outside of this. But thank you so much for being great. Oh.